ask him to. Wow. But just give That's us like, small feedback. Yeah. Sometimes my favorite story about Harumi is she was doing 800 and I was doing 400. Yeah. So I was just helping her through her 800 workout. Another day that Greg happened to be there. And I might have run her out a little bit fast. Okay. And so she went like 75, 85. <laughs> yeah. And Greg was standing there. We didn't know he was kind of us. Yeah. And all he says is, very uneven. <laughs> Very uneven. <laughs> Nobody asked. Yeah. Wow. The feedback is provided. <laughs>
campus, my recruiting visit was sick. They took me to a <laughs> basketball game yeah, yeah. and a football game. Oh, nice. And I was like, okay, this is where I'm meant to be. Um, and I'm glad I made the decision because although running didn't go well, like, I struggled so much. I didn't run a single PR for five years. Wow. Um, multiple wow, coaching that's... changes. Coaching yeah. on your best friend, Callie. I did. I met her from your life. Yeah. 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 So, like, met Silver linings. People. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of other good friends, too. And, like, right. I also learned, like, the definition of resilience oh, yeah. at Kentucky. And I felt like to walk away with all of those great silver linings was probably better than running a PR. That's really cool, like, yeah. 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 Holy shit. Oh, yeah, buddy. He's talking while running, dude. Don't get pissed. Yes, yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, he didn't like Kentucky either. All right. And then Molly, you go up to uh, Eugene, Oregon. Ever heard of it? The Ducks. Um, so. Yeah. yeah. Oh, even better. Um, how did you land on that program uh, initially? Obviously, California again. That might make sense, but. Is it just an assumed pipeline for um, your area, or not so much? I don't know. I think for me personally, I wanted to stay on the West Coast. Mm -hmm. um, so I looked at a lot of Pac-12 schools. Um, I looked at like Cal and Washington and yep. Stanford. But um, I only took two visits. I went to Washington and Oregon. And I mean, I feel like at the time in high school, I didn't really understand or respect kind of the history that Oregon had. Mm. Um, oh, really? Yeah, it just like, they were really, they were recruiting me really hard, and so was Washington. Um, and I went on my Washington trip and had kind of a similar experience to Rudy. I just had a really great time. Oh, no. And so much fun. <laughs> and so, Let's I go dogs. Like at the time, like my parents, my coach, they all just thought that I was going to go to Washington, mm -hmm. and I was high schooler and felt like I wanted to not do whatever I wanted. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's really what it came down to. Two of Hell yeah. <laughs> so I went to Oregon and I mean. Never let them see your next move. <laughs> it was, a, I mean, a great decision and I did it. I definitely had some rough years. Hmm. Um, I ran really poorly, obviously, because my heart was in the wrong spot <laughs> uh, my freshman year um, and took kind of some time off and just really decided that I wanted it and wanted to be you know, part of the best team and oh, yeah. be contributing to that. So. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. So, I know, I mean, Marisa Powell to me is one of the most underrated or at least unsung coaches yeah. in the country. What was that like, culture like, or maybe a peek behind the curtain in that yeah. era of training? Yeah, I mean, she was great. She wasn't who I was recruited by. Okay. There was a coaching change. And so, Jenny Ashcroft was the one who recruited me, and I really, like, she was a great kind of transition into college for me, but then having Marisa, um, like you said, she's just, like underrated and yeah. is really great at um, kind of taking young women and helping them through that tough yeah. transition of high school to college because it's, it's a hard time. Yeah. Um, my body's still changing <laughs> and there's just like a lot of things that, like so many variables that you never have to think about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I like, I haven't had a woman Coach, so yeah. invested. My high school coach was male, and then Ben was male. Right. So it was just nice to kind of have that investment in someone who I could really like connect sure. with and talk to. You also, I mean, you raced with or your teammates were uh, people that would probably know Nikki Hiltz, yeah. Ali Cashmo, Emma Abramson. Yeah. Yep. Um, well, yeah, yeah, I've heard of her dropping <laughs> dropping names out here, uh, and you won NCAA's. Yeah. Twice? Um, Track yes. cross? Uh, no, I wasn't part of that cross team. Oh, okay, actually. right, right, right. During my soul searching. Okay, got <laughs> it. Um, I kind of, I don't know. But, I mean, I was like, I was still on the team. Yeah, yeah. You no, know, we all got our, like, jelly buttons appear and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I didn't know that either. <laughs> yeah, so it was a fun time. Oh. Jordan almost did. She came with Damn. us and was planning on it. But wow. We, we'll hold her to that next time. We'll get her talking about it. But yeah, indoors um, and outdoors. Yeah, so yeah. Things, so, it's really fun. Sick program, yeah. So, 
Yeah. Are we going left here? Left, yeah. yeah. Perfect. Is, it's like okay. Yeah, it's kind of Bear with us, everyone. All right, so that's a good segue. Uh, the boulder scene that you both have ended up in now. Take us through, like, because you, you were talking about the transition from high school to college. Let's talk transition from college to now post collegiate elite running. You both have jobs, also careers, and you know a full on life outside. So how's how's that been? And any big lessons from you know those years and life nowadays? <laughs> well, I feel like this is where our paths kind of diverge, but then came together. Interesting. Because I moved to Boulder. Um, I had I got like transferred out here when I was working for Target at the time. Okay. And I was still running, but like I was just like doing running as like my second. Oh wow! Job. So that was just happenstance that you came out here. The reason I came out here for vacation and we vlogged okay. out yeah, here, yeah, yeah. and I had like asked if there was a possibility to get okay. transferred, and they're like, maybe like <laughs> if your stars align. Right. And then they did. Okay. So I came out here, and then like I found Hudson, like Brad Hudson was my mm -hmm. coach back then. But I felt like Molly came out here to pursue post Right, right. A little bit more focused. So, is yeah. that true? And how did you... I mean, obviously we know now the boulders like the Mecca, but did you know that at the time? Um, yeah, I mean, I... Like, I thought living in the mountains would be really cool. Again, like, I'm questioning all of my research decisions, <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I just, I was kind of looking at a couple groups, um, and ultimately decided, I think North Health Distance was one, mm. um, and decided to join Roots, and um, that's what brought me out here, and I just loved the running, the community, um, yeah, and I was kind of in a weird place with running, and it took me a while to kind of get into a, a good and positive group and relationship with it again, sure. um, but I definitely rode kind of a carousel of different teams and coaches yeah. of Boulder. Yeah. And I was remotely coached, and I was coached by Brad, coached by Roots, self-coached, mm. coached by friends. Done it all. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, I just kind of, I've really done it all and just learned what has been best for me and what works for me. So what is that? Let's like, any um, bottom line maybe that... Training with the Roots. <laughs> okay. Honestly, yes. Yeah, because you success. Yeah. All right. Just like the... The friendship and mm. making sure that I'm having fun and Huge. enjoying it has been, you know, the biggest thing. I'm not kind of a go out there and grind and kill myself and right. like I wish I was. <laughs> I really wish I was, but it's just not who I am. Oh yeah. Um, so as long as I have people to work out with and I'm enjoying what I'm doing, then the races are kind of just icing on the cake. Wow, yeah. that's yeah, good lesson as well. I think yeah. like post collegiate running, like there's so many. We're all in like such different places like there's people in boulder on full-on pro deals like mm. olympic medalists and then there's like people like us who work a full-time job and like there's a few hours in a day we can dedicate to our running yeah and so like having fun and like being around people you like when you're doing that is like crucial yeah because there's so many reasons not to do it like, for sure after eight hour day like i don't want to be out <laughs> running yeah. but i'm doing it if i'm meeting my friend yeah that's a great lesson yeah. too yeah um, so you got the Rise Tanks on, which, Rise. which is the uh, the group that you both found now, right? Yes. So yes. is this this is Nell Rojas' father? Just ready on the coach and all Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that's I don't know what's his first name. Rick. Rick. Okay. So how did that group, you know, form? I, I don't know anything. So what's kind of the backstory with Rise? The is kind of. <laughs> the catalyst. Yeah. So I was coached by my high school coach since when Hudson League broke up. Okay. And he's promoted out in Virginia. And I was in this really tough spot in my career where I was doing really good training, but it wasn't translating the races. Mm. And I felt like the problem was that I like needed somebody to watch me run oh. and tell me when I'm pushing too hard, sure. trying to hit a workout on paper. But it just wasn't meant to be. And so, looking at the options in Boulder, Rick and Nell stood out to me because they had a really good thing going. And it was like also just the two of them. Oh, okay. And I felt like, I don't know, I just felt like I was ready to be part of a big group. We yeah. saw them out of the track almost yes. every single time we were yes. out there. And Manhattan? Or? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And like, Rick would be like timing us 
That's respect. Like, small feedback. Yeah. Sometimes my favorite story about coming to me. Yeah. Like, she was doing eight hundred, and I was doing four hundred. Yeah. So I was just helping her do her eight hundred workout. Another day, that Greg happened to be there, and I might have run her out a little bit fast. Okay. And so. She went like 75, 85. <laughs> yeah. And Rick was standing there. We didn't know he was tired of us. Yeah. And all he says is, very uneven. <laughs> very uneven. Like, nobody asked. Yeah. Wow. Like, the feedback is provided. <laughs> that's amazing. And I was like, that's what she needs. Yeah. <laughs> just a little bit. Wow. Nervous. That's a great story. Yeah, I didn't yeah. know. So he's just throwing you in. It's not even as the official coach. Like, literally, there's a million people on the track. It's like, you're trying to Right. Me. Yeah. Wow. Respect him. So then, how does the conversation go from that to, hey, let's get serious, like, coach me. Well, I reached out to him in the beginning of 2021, and I was like, I'm in a tough spot, like, told him everything that's going on, like, would you be able to work with me? And Molly was still doing her own thing at the time, also, like, in a bit of an injury. Oh. Um, and so, Rick, Nell and I started working together, and it took me a while to, like, have his training clicked. But I think Molly saw the seeds of greatness being planted, <laughs> and she wanted it. Very unusual. <laughs> yes. All right. So is that is it two three? How, what's it look like nowadays? It's much bigger now. Yeah. So it's us what do we two, got? and there's Mel, and then we have three other girls called named Lauren, Christina, and Bryn. Shout out. So most of us are marathoners, with the exception of Lauren. Okay. So that's a good segue to I want to talk about events and racing nowadays. I know Molly's coming up. I mean, you've done Sound, I saw. You've done CIM. Stanford. Stanford, right? Just yeah. So, what's kind of been a standout, maybe highlight of the last year or so with the races kind of being back? What's, what's any any big victories oh. for you personally? I know there's been good times, but. Honestly, I would say the whole last year has been a really positive step for me. Oh, heck yeah. Um, I've PR'd in every race wow. that I've done for like the past 18 years. Jeez! Months. Yeah. Whoa! <laughs> She's insane. She's insane. This girl's on fire! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like, Molly Doge. Maybe I'm just picking the right races. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? Um, but no, I, things have just been going really well for me, and um, I just kind of just want to. I don't really know what the secret is. Sure. I wish I could say it, but I'm just kind of been doing the same things. And, well, you alluded. I mean, I think it's a squad and yeah. consistency and everything. So, so world team and then marathon for sure. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright. Alright, take a big break. Right. You know, that'll be, I'll be in your team, so it makes sense. Oh, yeah. Gotta go back there. Like, yeah. Hard. Yeah, okay, wait. So there's a lot, I, I have so many questions, but I want to ask Haruni <laughs> the same question. Any Anything stand out from the year as a victory and then what's coming up? Um, For me, CIS last year, so Molly ran that race as well. Yep. Um, that marathon was like a huge defining moment in my career because I had gone through the worst, most challenging nine months of training. Oh, no. Like I was probably gonna scratch a week out. Yeah. And, like no way. I just like wasn't myself. It was very apparent. Like my body was in rebellion. Yeah. Um, but I lined up, gave myself a shot, and ran within ten seconds of my PR. Damn. And I was like super encouraged that. Yeah. There was still something there. Yeah. Right. Even yeah. yeah, not feeling great. Yeah. There's some meat on that bone. So, yeah, just a little bit of self-belief. Yeah, Reignited. goes a long way. Yeah. So, right. what's on the calendar? You said Grandma's off, off camera. Yeah, so I'm running Grandma's Marathon June 18th. Oh, yeah. And I've also been on the track. So, Rick is a big oh. track fan. Um, he likes to do a lot of short, fast things that mm. translate up to the marathon. That's good to know. I'm writing this down. Yeah, it works. <laughs> yeah. Just ran 225. Yeah, shout out. <laughs> we'll um, do a three episode with them too. Yes. Yeah. One day. Oh, that'd be awesome. <laughs> um, I won't even be in it. Just yeah. add now and I'm out. Yeah, you can just. <laughs> yeah. It's not a bad idea. <laughs> All right, so um, CIM though, I want to talk because we had Sarah Vaughn on who set the course record in that same race. I believe. Or yeah. was that the year yeah. before? Yeah, no, yeah. Same year. And yeah. you were second. Yep. So what was kind of the vibe that day? I mean, it seems like 
all three of you had good days. The CIM just, uh, you know, people talk about it as the best EQ spot. What's your takeaway? Easy course, fast course? Um, I think it, it can be fast, but I would say it's challenging. Like, we both struggled in our legs, like, super beat up from all the climbing and okay. downhills. Yeah. But definitely, <laughs> I mean, if you're a runner and holder, it's like, I'd say, obviously not as hard, but coming back from West Max, yeah. you know, you have that net downhill, but you still have to climb some hills, and you have to work. So, yeah. I think the hills definitely... I have heard the same thing, that it's an easy course, right. that like, it's a fast course, um, and I just didn't really give the hills that, the respect that it deserves. Oh, nice, alright. And I think that's where Sarah will really shine. Yeah, yeah. For sure, she was bombing those downhills. Yeah. And like, some that's what she said. Alright, well, we're approaching, I think, what's the end, is it? We can go a bit of a more. Okay, cool. Um, so, we're talking Hayward. I'd love to shout out that. What was that experience like in the old Hayward? Oh. And then maybe, what are you looking forward to? about going back. Yeah, I mean, haven't haven't gotten my qualifier yet. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Of course. Fingers we're crossed. Just, we're having a good time. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, it was really cool competing at Oregon and especially having nationals there and wearing the Oregon jersey. Yeah. Like that's an experience I'll never forget. Um, Have you heard anything about the new oh, stadium? What's I've the heard, racing experience like? I've heard a lot. I mean, it's, it seems really cool and just kind of Oregon's trademark of doing it not just good but just extra yeah, I just... so um i'm super excited yeah. to see it and um i think it'll be a really cool experience just to go back and see what the new hayward's like yeah um all right so i, I want, let's finish on this you both have uh partners who are elite athletes themselves we have morgan oh. on ah uh, yes i'd love to have Luis on as well <laughs> um how do you kind of balance that what's like the dynamic and any advice for having two elite athletes like in the same relationship. <laughs> Obviously, you know, whatever you're willing to share, but I, I think you guys have, you know, some nuggets well, at least. I think the key is like, there's ought to be a give and take in the relationship. Okay. Um, this is a new segment, relationship advice. <laughs> yeah, like both Morgan and Louise are still active athletes. Right. And do you want to do like a big circle yeah. in the back? Yeah, left, or this way? All right, let's do it. Well, well I think we should yeah, do a circle. Cool. Cool, yeah. Just around the block? Yeah. Yeah. All right, cool. Um, and I think, like, as athletes, we need, like, that emotional stability and assurance mm. from our partner and in our relationship. So, like, for me, the most important thing has been, like, I need him there when I need that support, and then I need to be there for him. Yeah. yeah. Like, and there's just and such ups and downs in running, and it's hard, like, when... Morgan was going to the Olympics and things were going Flags. really well for him. Yeah. Um, I was running was going horrible. Oh no, yeah, yeah. I wasn't really running, but like I had to like I felt like me being there for him and like supporting him mm -hmm. was, you know, like that's the role you had to play. And sometimes when you're injured, like yeah, the last yeah, thing yeah, you want to right. do is like watch running or <laughs> yeah. whatever. But I mean it was so like when you care about someone it's a no brainer, you know, yeah. you're so excited for them and want the best for them. So I think that it's it can be challenging, but it's super rewarding, and their victories are yours as well. Yeah, so, totally. All right, unreal. Any other? Let's see. Trying to rack. We got more. We'll, we'll we'll do a bigger episode maybe with now or a bigger squad. But um, we want to wrap it here just in case we lose this footage. All the run details, of course, will be on Trackster. Um, and we're gonna do a little bit more mileage, so we'll uh, leave it to you there, but. Thanks, thanks for Molly and Rudy. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thanks oh, yeah. for having us. We'll drop all the uh, social too for these two beasts right here. And <laughs> make sure you follow along for grandmas, the track season, everything coming up. Are you here, Nux? <laughs> all right. All right, that's a wrap. Let's circle back. Nice. Thank y'all. Yeah. That was fire. <laughs>